Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe and welcome to episode 21 of 3D Universe Untethered. In this bi-weekly live stream series, we get to hear from people across varying industries about the great things they're doing with digital fabrication. As always, you can visit 3duniverseuntethered.com to see all of our upcoming episodes and access recordings of our previous episodes. You can also get 3D Universe Untethered as a podcast through any of the major podcast platforms. And if you're watching us live on Facebook right now, please join in by posting comments there on the live event page. We'll try to keep an eye on those and we'll address those uh, before we wrap up at the end today. So in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at desktop vacuum forming and all of the wonderful kinds of projects that you can do with this kind of machine. And to talk us through all those possibilities and show us some examples of those projects, I'm pleased to welcome Jen Owen, creative director here at 3D Universe. Hi, Jen. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. So as you may recall from previous episodes, we've been sending Jen various kinds of digital fabrication equipment for a while now, just to see what her experience was like as someone not previously familiar with these kinds of technologies. So uh, she's been documenting that process as she's gone along with videos and those are on our YouTube channel. So definitely check those out if you haven't seen them, they're a lot of fun. So Jen, first we sent you a laser cutter, right? and yeah. then a 3D printer. And uh, we've shared some of those projects already on, on YouTube. But now more recently, we sent you a desktop vacuum forming machine. This is called a make you form box, right? Yes. And uh, so today we're gonna be talking about your experience with this machine and some of the projects that you've done and some of the other projects you might have planned. Sound good to you? Yes. And okay. I apologize for the noise. I am on a road trip and apparently they're cleaning the, the room above me. There you go. It's always gonna happen right <laughs> at the time we're doing a live stream, right? Yes. It's not too loud. I, I think our audience <laughs> will forgive us. So I think yeah. we should probably start off with just a quick overview of what this is that we're talking about, how this machine works, how you use it, some of the things that you can do with it. Um, and I'm going to kind of walk us through that overview. And then I'm going to kind of turn things to you to walk us through some of the projects that you've done. And I will be playing some short video clips throughout the session today, and we'll, be, we'll just be kind of talking uh, over as those play. If you are watching, or I'm sorry, if you are listening on our podcast uh, for this session, we'll do our best to kind of describe what's going on in those videos. But uh, we, uh, we're going to start with one here just to give you a quick overview of how this Make You Form box works. So I'm going to go ahead and share screen here. So this is, as I said, a desktop vacuum forming machine. What's cool about it is that it works with any standard vacuum cleaner or a small shop vac. It comes with everything you need to get started. As you can see, there's a little starter kit being shown on screen. They give you several different shapes to get started with, to, to experiment with, including this one here. Uh, now this shape that they're using in this video, which is sort of like an, uh, again, an egg cup type shape, is a good example of something that you do need to keep in mind if you start to build your own designs and you want to do vacuum forming anywhere that there's sort of a dip like you're seeing here, where the, the sheet of, of plastic is going to need to be sucked down into that cavity, you're going to need to add in suction holes so that the air can pass through and you can see that here in this test object. And so basically you make your, uh, your part, your, your shape that you want to use to create your molds. And then you pick your, your sheet material. And we'll talk about some of the different types of materials that are available. And you put that on the machine and it heats up. The heating element is up at the top. And you basically watch your material and it'll start to droop down when it gets to the right temperature as it softens. And then you just push that bed down and it will automatically activate your vacuum, automatically triggering the suction and in a few seconds, you're ready to pop that part out of there and you have a nice clean mold. Now I'm gonna stop it here. We won't go through the rest of this, which is about pouring plaster and all of that because we actually have another video clip later that we're going to show that covers that part of it. So I just wanted to show the basics of how the machine works for now. So um, the, uh, the different kinds of sheets, I mentioned that you can use different kinds of materials for creating these, these forms. Uh, the ones that Make You offers, they have the cast sheets, which are half a millimeter thick, clear sheets that are food safe. So these are great for making you know, chocolates or any other kind of food things. Um, they also have thing, something called clear sheets, same material, it's a clear pet G plastic, but these are double the thickness, one millimeter thick, just a little bit thicker and more sturdier, again, food safe. Then they have form sheets, which are opaque white sheets. And these are commonly used for things like custom packaging. Uh, you wouldn't use those for, for food uh, products and things like that. Recently, they introduced something called resin sheets, which go along with a special accessory called a heat shield. And these resin, sh resin sheets are one and a half millimeters thick, so really thick kind of soft resin material uh, specifically designed for making molds forecasting resin. And we actually have a clip to show you on that later. 
And then in terms of the casting materials that you can work with, there's lots of options. The one that make you specifically sort of approves is, uh, would be concrete, soap, plaster, jesmonite, and uh, the pigments that go along with that for jesmonite and then chocolate or other food type products. So uh, quite a lot of options within there. And of course, there are other materials that you could use that might not be formally approved by Make You, but you can get creative, of course. So there's a lot of different ways of creating forms. And um, Jen, I'd like you to maybe talk to us a little bit about this. The, um, you know, we here at 3D Universe obviously do a lot with 3D printing. And so the first thing that would come to my mind would be, oh, I've got a 3D printer. I can, I can 3D print a shape and I can put that on the form box and, and make molds with that, right? So that's, that's obviously one option. But mm -hmm. not everybody has a 3D printer. So, um, and you certainly don't need one. So what are some of the other ways that you could go about making shapes to, to make forms out of? Well, I do have a 3D printer, but I am kind of an old school artist type person, and I really love working with my hands. So part of the process for my stuff is getting to work with the materials that I'm making the mold with. Um, so far, I have done a laser cut um, project, which I used that for. But I am looking forward to using uh, a potato. You can cut yes. a potato into fun shapes. Um, you can use wood shapes, you can carve wood, or you can just make, you know, sp sp basic um, shapes that you would just form around. You could use shells. Um, I have a crazy idea to maybe use a broccoli to <laughs> make little trees for a terrarium. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so lots of possibilities. And, <laughs> yeah. And you, you can you can get creative. Uh, you yeah. had some great ideas there, but uh, clay, I don't know if you mentioned clay, but you can, clay. You can yeah. um, I, I was thinking that maybe uh, EVA foam, that stuff that we use for cosplay a lot, where you could probably cut yeah. shapes out of EVA foam and use that. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. almost anything that's semi-rigid. It doesn't even have to be entirely rigid, just enough right. to you know, hold, hold up to the vacuum pressure. Um, and I mean, the sheet is going to be heated when it goes against it, but that heat dissipates very quickly. So mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be a tremendously heat resistant material, just right. something that's not too sensitive, right? So right. yeah, lots of possibilities with just materials that you'd find around the home or things that you could find at a flea market or, uh, you know, all, all sorts of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, if you have a 3D printer, some of us do, and some of our watchers and, and listeners do, there are definitely some additional benefits with that, especially if you want to get into more intricate types of designs, like say you want raised lettering on one of your, your molds or, or a logo or things like that. That's where I can see a 3D printer really giving you an advantage because you can print exactly those shapes that, and contours that you want and use that to create your mold. So um, lots of options though, that's, that's nice. I like that flexibility. So um, I've already kind of alluded to some of these things, but let's, let's talk about some of the types of things before we get into your project specifically. You know, what can you do with a machine like this? And I, I, you know, I don't know if, if you would agree, but it seems to me that the most common examples that I see are custom molds, whether it be chocolates yeah. or soaps or anything like that, making a mold and then putting something in it seems to be the most common case, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. uh, another cool use case that I don't know that you've messed around with yet, but one that I find uh, particularly interesting is using, again, in combination with a 3D printer, you can think of this machine as a way of multiplying your 3D prints much more rapidly than you can using the printer. So you could print something and then use the form box to make essentially copies of that, making molds and then right. you know cast it in, in a matter of seconds. You can create uh, cast copies of that 3D print much faster than you could make more 3D printed copies of it. So that's another possible use. Um, and then uh, hands-on learning, I think, is another great opportunity, wouldn't yeah. you say, of, of bringing this kind of machine into the classroom or a makerspace? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about opportunities when it comes to learning, uh, thinking about kids and getting their hands on, on a machine like this? I think for, for kids, this is an awesome machine. I, you know, first you sent me the laser cutter, which was terrifying because I had never <laughs> used any kind of um, technology like that before. And then came the 3D printer, and that was a little less terrifying. I uh, can't really burn the house. I mean, you can burn the house down, but not quite like you can. Not likely. <laughs> but, but the make you, it was just, I don't know. It was just so easy. You just put the sheet in there, you pop it up, you put your mold, your form in, and you pull it down and voila, three minutes later, you have a mold for something. And it was really easy to learn. Um, I think it would be a great thing for classrooms where, you know, with 3D printing, if you have if you have 20 students and they all want to make something if they want to 3d print it 
that's going to take a long time because you know each that's 3D right. print could be five to ten to fifteen hours per exactly. student. Where if you gave them you know a project that they were supposed to do and you know here's some clay, make your form out of this and then we can multiply it rapidly or each student would be able to make something quickly. Um, Absolutely. I can also see where maybe there would be a collaborative design where they work together mm -hmm. to create a model that gets 3D printed and then they could use the form box to make copies of that 3D print so that everybody gets right. one. So yeah. yeah, lots of nice possibilities in the classroom. So that's definitely a good, I, I think one good example of where this could be put to use would be classrooms and maker spaces. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about other, other places where I'm seeing this, this machine become popular, small businesses, right? I mean, I'm seeing people all over the place, especially recently, um, Make You has some of these folks featured on their website where, you know, during the recent pandemic and the lockdown, people were kind of stuck at home. People yeah. would use, you know, you can use a machine like this to start up an Etsy business, start making custom, you know, uh, things for around the home or whatever it is that you, you want to do. You can, you know, bring your ideas to life very quickly with, with a, a machine like this. So I think of, of individuals wanting to start a small business um, or existing businesses. You know, if you want to create maybe custom packaging for your products, or it can help with uh, part of the prototyping process of evaluating different design ideas uh, before you go to full production on them. So lots of possibilities with a machine like this. And so having kind of laid the, the, the groundwork there and sort of uh, teased our audience a bit with what you can do, let's get into some of the, the specific projects that, that you've done. And I, I want to start us up with a, with a video here that I'm going to ask you to kind of narrate for us, Jen. This is uh, a project that you did where you made your own custom soap. And I'm going to pull that up okay. now. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, here we go. And I'll let you kind of tell us what's going on. All right. Here. So I started a travel blog um, on YouTube called The Traveling Dork. And I wanted to make soap with my own logo. So we used the 3D printer and we had to punch holes in the design so that the vacuum could suck the air through. Um, to get the little intricate details of my logo. Um, it took us a couple tries because the 3D printer kept filling it in. And then I just popped the sheet on there. Got it ready. It was uh, really easy. And then I put my mold, my, uh, then I put my forms on there. Waited the, uh, appropriate amount of time. You have to wait for it to kind of bow. You can see it in the video mm -hmm. bowing there. And then the vacuum sucked it down. And mm. I ended up with nice. Yeah, that came out pretty well. Uh, yeah, some molds for my soap. Yeah, so we've got a nice logo there of a van yeah, with somebody and, dancing on top of it. Yeah, and I hadn't, um, I had never made soap before, so I kind of just went with the easy approach and got the stuff mm -hmm. you just melt in the microwave. Yeah. Um, swirl it around. It took me a few tries because I wasn't fast enough stirring, <laughs> and then it would harden. So I had to. Um, and what are these? Dot, are you using food coloring here, or what is that? Um, they're specifically for soap. Um, oh, okay. I think, if you, I think if you use food coloring, you'll end up dyed like an okay. Easter egg if you're in the shower. So you don't oh, yeah, good point. want to do that. <laughs> good point. Okay, and so now you're mixing different <laughs> so, colors together. Yes. Yeah. So you can see it's kind of still, it's a little chunky there. It, it, this is my first try, so please forgive yeah. me. No, but what, so, so what, you're, what we're showing in the video is just different <laughs> colors being layered in together yeah. in, the, in the mold, and now she's yeah. popping them out. And then it, it just popped right out real easy. Oh, look at that. And then I have my soap, and it smells really Very nice. good. It smells good, looks great. Custom soaps, yeah. I love it. I love it. Nobody's going to steal mine at the campground. Well, if they do, <laughs> they have an awesome soap now. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And you can always make another. You still got the forms, right? Yes. Awesome. That's, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it's probably a lot cheaper. I don't know what that, the big block of soap costs you, but I imagine just cranking yeah. out your own now that you have the form, probably cheaper. And than I can make each soaps. one a different smell too, if I wanted. Yeah, yeah true. All right. Well, that's cool. So um, tell me about this. Uh, other than what we saw in the video, what was this like? Was this, first of all, were the soaps, was that the first project that you did with the form? Yeah, that was, that was the first project I did. And um, it was a lot more complicated than it needed to be because I didn't really think through the fact that the soap would harden so fast. So I had four different colors and I melted them all at once in a big thing and then poured them into little individual things. And then I added the color and stirred. And by the time I got to putting the color in the last one, the first one had hardened. So I was like doing this 
yeah. going back and forth to the microwave. Um, right. And then I would pour. You need like, a, need like a hot plate or something. Yeah. So yeah. I think the next soap I want to do, I want to do like the glycerin soap that's that's see-through so I can add just a little tint of color. Um, nice. I'm on my big road trip for the summer and I stopped in Squim, Washington and I got um, this bundle of lavender from the lavender farm at the farmer's market and it is now losing its little buds all over my van so I'm gonna pick those up and put them in soap so when I get home I'm going to use a potato mm -hmm. and cut out some shapes and make some glycerin soap with lavender in it very and nice yeah so I think that will be a little easier I will just have one color at a time probably purple and then put the, the lavender in there <laughs> really awesome. easier. And, and you know I, I actually learned something myself in this project because I, I helped with the doing the CAD model for the mm -hmm. 3D printed uh, a form that used for these soaps so I did that in Fusion 360 and, and as we showed in the video I put all those holes in there for suction but what I didn't do is I didn't do that modeling parametrically. Now, I don't know if everyone watching is gonna know what I mean by that, but it's worth looking into, do your modeling parametrically, set the diameter of those holes so that you can adjust them later. Cause I didn't do that. And what we did is we ended up having to shrink the whole part down which shrunk all the holes down. And when mm -hmm. we tried to print it, the holes kind of, you know, they, they, they merged together and, and we didn't have open holes. So I had to go back and adjust all the holes individually in Fusion. Whereas had I done it parametrically, I would have just had to adjust one value and they all would have changed. So that's my tip for the audience is, is <laughs> yeah. do your holes parametrically so that you can change them later. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what was next after, so after soaps, you, you talked to us about doing this, these uh, glycerin soaps, that's the next project with mm -hmm. lavender. Any other, any other soap projects planned? Um, I'm not sure. I kind of want to make some soaps where there's like a little treasure inside. Like you don't know until you've, cleaned yourself plenty of times if there's gonna be I like, like a little that guy joe or you yeah, know like sort of like a little incentive in maybe like like a it's nothing a 3D, too sharp no i i was thinking maybe like a 3d printed nose <laughs> i don't know if that, it smells good <laughs> you might you might want to you might want to patent that before somebody watching runs off with that yeah oh wait <laughs> <laughs> so okay um next what do we do after the soap what was your next project i made Oh, look at that. Hold it up a little closer to the camera, will you? We're looking at a beautiful planter. Oh, and what is that made out of? That's some kind of a plaster? It's um, the Make You powder that came with the Make You form box. Um, I think it's dental plaster. I think you're right. That's the Make You pour, yeah. So this is, this really is a nice... Smooth. This is it's it's nice that they include that. I said before that you get everything you need to get started with this machine, including this bag of make you pour, which is this this very fine grain dental plaster. So it, it comes out yeah. very smooth. Now it's not even a product they offer, but they do provide uh, plate recommendations of where you can get these things, like the the dental plaster. You but you can also use regular uh, plaster of Paris, uh, and then some of the other materials we mentioned, like concretes and things like that. So lots of options. So right. let's go ahead and play a video and have you talk us through this project. Let me get this next one up here. All right, so I put my make you uh, to work. I found a glass at the thrift store and I used that for my shape oh, and it was idea. just the right size. And it was tapered so that when I pulled it out of the mold, it would pop out. I had tried a different glass and it is still currently stuck in there. I will have to cut it out when I get home. <laughs> it didn't taper properly. So um, in order to make the hole for my planter, I used this little um, votive candle holder that I found at the thrift store. So in total, I think the, the, the forms I used cost me like four bucks total from the, the thrift store and and I'm, I'm just going to pause this here because I want to make sure that people don't miss the, the very important thing that you just said about the, the tapering of that glass, because that's something you want to think about when you're using this machine. You can't yeah. have anything that in the 3D printing world, we would think of this as an overhang. So you can't have anything where it comes in because right. you'll be able to form the plastic around it, no problem, but you won't be able to get your part out of the, the yeah. mold. And yeah, so my, you, you do have to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. My very first... Oh, I'm going to make a, a gem soap idea was to put an actual rock on there. And, and so I it went under the edges. And yeah. I'm like, uh, 
Now you have a nicely sealed rock. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. I'm going to run it again. Yeah. All right. So I was able to get those out really easily. I used the Make You Form Powder and just kind of eyeballed it. I mean, there's instructions on the back, but basically you want it kind of like the same consistency as pancake batter. Um, I added some pigment to my powder before I mixed in the water so it would just all mix in. Um, and then I poured it. My first blue one was, a, my blue color wasn't as thin as I wanted. You can see in the video, my, my mixing is getting a little better as I go and learn. Um, and then I just kind of dumped it in there and let it do its thing. So you could get kind of like a, a tie dyed um, look. It kind of, I wanted it to match my uh, traveling dork colors because I was taking her with me on my travels. So I put the small form in the big form and taped it down so that it would form around it. And then I took the tape off and pulled the smaller form out where my hole was. And it was a, a little challenge to get out, but it wasn't too bad. And then the, the main form just kind of popped right out. It, uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, and it was super smooth. And now, if was, had you wanted to, you could have then sanded that top side down so it was flat. But I noticed that you yeah. liked it. It was it is you like you like you yeah, left it as I, is, right? Yeah, I did. It's got yeah. like like a Gives nice it a little look. extra character. Yeah. Well, and it's also holding the dirt in. Yeah. Okay, that makes so, sense. And, and when I when I water it, the the water doesn't come out. The nice. Top. Nice. So this lives in my van now. Yeah, and so you just, that's right off the machine. You didn't have to do anything else to finish that. No. It's, that, that was and, it. And it, um, it hardened within 24 hours. I mean, it, nice. the, it, it set within 10 minutes. It was done pro kind of processing itself. And then it said to wait, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. I left it in there for an hour or two. And then I just kind of pulled it out and let it air dry the rest of the way. And, but it was hard and solid when I pulled it out. It, it wasn't, you know, it just needed to cure a little bit overnight. That's so. great. That's great. All right. So plaster, a lot of, I'm thinking there's so many things you could do with that because oh, yeah. and, and especially with what you did where you're using two different shapes to kind of create cavities and man, that has so many possibilities that that opens mm -hmm. up. Well, like I was thinking how cool it would be to, um, you know, how you can do the, the little footprints of your babies in like clay. You could like punch some holes in that a little bit and then make a form. And then you can like, instead of torturing the child and making, you know, six different versions on their little foot in clay for each grandparent now, and aunt, uncle. You it just is, it is so <laughs> funny that you brought that up because I kid you not, just not, not an hour ago, I was thinking about exactly that, except it was my cat was walking on me and we had been talking <laughs> about chocolates. And I was thinking, you know, I'll bet you could push the cat's paw into some clay and use yeah. that to make a, a, a form. And then you could make like cat's paw chocolates. Okay, so yeah. Go get that yeah, I mean, there's so many things you could do. It's it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, speaking of chocolates, I guess I should I, I should show an example of doing chocolates. Now, I this was before I sent the form box to you. I did some playing around with the form box and I did an experiment with chocolates. And that video is on our YouTube channel, but I'm not going to play that one today because I don't feel like I did a great job. I mean, they, they, they tasted great, but they, were, they, they weren't the prettiest chocolates. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll let you watch the video. But, um, you know, it's, it's not my particular skill set. But I'm going to share a short video here showing what you can do when it comes to chocolates. So let me find the right one here. There we go. So make you did this one and it's just a, a fun example of, of uh, you know, this is one of my favorite things to do. Now, <laughs> I, I think maybe we should just point out that if any of our, our watchers or listeners are thinking of going into the custom chocolate business, maybe don't use the poop emoji for your chocolate <laughs> shapes. I Just saying, I mean, I, I'm just gonna put that out there and leave it at that. Okay, on we go. <laughs> so the idea here is that you can create custom shapes and I, this video is showing how we've talked about clay. And I think clay is one of the you know, most wonderful options to use with this machine just because it's so easy. Anyone can grab a ball of clay and make something like you see here, a little three-dimensional emoji and 
drop it on there. And you notice they didn't even have to let that fully, it's not like they let it dry for days. You can tell by the color of the clay, that's still soft clay, but it's hard yeah. enough to do the forming. And then they melt the chocolate down. And this is where I didn't do as well as they did. And this next step where they're actually <laughs> spooning it into the cabinet, you know, you, you really, you gotta be very slow. And, you know, it's just that that's where I, I kind of, you know, made a bit of a mess. Well, theirs came out nice and neat. It, it, I, I, I noticed in another video, they showed how it's helpful to kind of shake the, the, the mold, the tray after you put it in there to kind of get rid of any bubbles and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just make a little custom box here to put that in. And uh, I think they show the actual, no, they don't show the form. So here's, there's the custom soap, the custom uh, chocolates though. So well, I have a lot of fun with chocolates. Now there's, there's I, I spent a few minutes earlier today looking at what other people were doing out there. And there's a lot of uh, really interesting projects being done by chocolatiers and mm -hmm. confectionists. And, you know, I, I saw one guy that was doing uh, layering where he would, he would do chocolates like that, but he would put down the sort of a milk chocolate layer. And then he would put other types of like uh, a maple, like uh, filling on the inside and things, things like that. You can put nuts and things like that in there. So you can really get creative when it comes to foodstuffs in a, in a form box. Right. Now you haven't played with any foodstuffs yet, have you? No, but um, I do have a friend who's a chocolatier and I think I'm going to see if we can figure out how to get her logo on her chocolates because she does chocolate bars. Yes. Um, and oh, yeah. uh, it's expensive to get a silicone mold made, but I could yeah. just make her some, some, you can just 3d print a, a, a part and then form it. Yeah. Yeah. And I am happy to help you with the testing of your product. Oh, on that all one. right. Yeah. I, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> send it my way. All right. So, um, Let's see, chocolates, foodstuffs, other other kind of projects that come to mind. Anything else that you have plans for going forward before I go into showing some of your, uh, your, your one of your final videos here? Um, yes, so as I mentioned before, I am on a road trip this week. I've been on the road for seven days now. I'm sleeping in my van and stopping at different beaches along the way and I collect rocks and I might have might have gotten a little excited and collected a whole nice. bunch of rocks. And um, needless to say, <laughs> this makes your fanny pack really heavy and pulls yeah. your pants down. But I um I'm decorating my van and I have little bits of color. That's a lie. I have a lot of color in my van. It's basically like somebody exploded skittles all over inside on my bed all over the walls whatever but i have a project that i was thinking about on the four hours between forks and cape disappointment i have this lantern a basic camping lantern and i like pretty things and my camping lantern is kind of ugly so i thought maybe when i get home i will take um i'll just make some basic rectangle or square shapes for building a box that I can form the shapes with and then use that as a resin mold mm. and then put my little rocks in there and then glue it all together into a cube and then shove my lantern underneath and then when it shines there will oh, be yeah. little pretty be rocks beautiful. all over. So that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, and then I'll probably use a potato or clay to make um, some little shapes. I've got some tiny little pebbles that I collected, and I, I want to make some kind of shapes to make kind of like a little garland to go in between my fairy lights along my windows. Mm. So, I have, you know, different shapes, um, maybe not even organic, you know, maybe they'll just be odd shapes. And I'll poke some more resin in that and then put the little pebbles inside so they're, they kind of catch the light. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have, I want to make a keychain. Um, I have. Now how, oh, a, so a keychain, you're talking about like a part that you would form and then mm -hmm. do something in what would that be resin? Maybe you do something. Yeah, like? I've, I've kind of fallen in love with resin. Nice. It looks like a cool material. I'm going to have to it is. check that out. It's really cool. And so the, oh, and you mentioned uh, uh, in an earlier discussion, you said that you were going to work on a terrarium. Now, how would you do a terrarium yeah. with a form box? Um, Make You has a couple of really good videos, oh, but okay. instead of, so 
um, I would probably make the form for the bottom. I would probably just use this form again, and then mm -hmm. you can make a, another shape um, right, okay. on top. And then, then you don't use that. I mean, you just cut out around because the sheets are easy to, to cut with an X-Acto knife. And then yeah. you can just put, because I kept the lip on this. Um, so if I did that again, it would just fit right over there and then it wouldn't slide around. And then I could just um, hot glue it down probably. But um, I want to try my hand at that. I tend to kill plants. So I'm hoping this one stays alive. So far, so good. So far. <laughs> 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 all right so many possibilities that's what i love about this machine is that just the mm -hmm. flexibility of what it offers and you don't really yeah. don't need anything special like i said at the beginning it works with any standard vacuum cleaner or shop vac most often i see people using a small shop vac with it and it just plugs right in it, it the power for your vacuum actually plugs into the back of the form box and that's how it's able to turn it on automatically when you lower it down and um just really like you said easy to use simple to get started mm -hmm. but so many possibilities and uh, and affordable too, which um, yeah, you... I I think that um, with COVID and so many, especially moms having to stay home with their kids because of school not being in session, and that you know they give up their careers to go back to staying home with their kids, and then they you know had to try to figure out how to make money. So right. I think something like this, you know, it's it's a not that expensive for this machine yep. at all. Um, I've seen uh, a big I, booth I'll, of Etsy. I'll, I'll just interject for those who might not be curious, since we mentioned it's six ninety nine currently. So that's the price mm -hmm. point, $699 for a, a brand new Make You Form box with everything that you need to get started. Um, and yeah. of course, you can find those along with everything else we offer at shop3duniverse.com. Yeah, but I, you know, you can make jewelry, you can make soaps. Um, there's just, there's a, a big market for all of that and yep. it's i think it's opened up a way for for those um, folks who lost their jobs during covid to that's right make some income and if you that's you right. know you do really well on etsy and you're you're busting out a bunch of um jewelry you're making back your money on what you spend on the machine and absolutely if you have a mold you don't have to you know hand carve things repeatedly and just you know or Whatever. You right. know. And, you know, the other thing that I love about this, which ties into uh, the, I think, the whole of digital fabrication, including 3D printing, something that we often see is that um, digital fabrication is used earlier on in the stage of product development and sort of ramping up uh, production. So in this case, to use this as an example, you talk about opening an Etsy business. Well, if somebody really does well and it really takes off, you know, knock on wood, you would end up, you know, hiring employees and then you'd, you would shift to more, you know, higher end production equipment or maybe outsourcing mm -hmm. production. But something like this is a stepping stone. It lets anyone get started very cost effectively. It lets you prove out your idea, see if it's actually working, see if it's actually in demand, that you can make money off of it, get something going that's profitable and use that to fund then scaling the business up. So we see the same thing with 3D printing. Businesses will use 3D printers to maybe produce small quantities of a new part until you know volume gets high enough where they need to shift to injection molding. Same idea here. It's a great way to sort of slowly ramp things up as you're exploring a, a new product possibility, a new business. Well, even just just making packaging to ship your stuff once you've True. made it, you know, if That's you've right. got if you've got um, you know something, maybe you maybe you do blown glass jewelry or something. You can make a nice packaging with you know cardboard. That's right. and, or even some of the things we've talked about here, if your product could be made on the form box, like you talked about making glycerin soaps, you can make right. fancy glycerin custom shaped soaps and then make custom packaging to put the soaps in. Yeah and have a nice fancy box with custom, you know, uh, form packaging inside. And it, it can be a beautiful product presentation and you can do both mm -hmm. of those things with the form box. Yeah. So quite a versatile machine. I'm glad you're having fun with it. And I look forward to seeing all the other projects that you have planned. Now we are gonna share one more video here. Uh, and I saved this one for the end because I know it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's a personal one for you. I know this might get a yeah. bit emotional, but um, tell us about this project, uh, the video, you know, the one I'm pulling up. So talk to us about yeah. what this is. So my grandpa passed away in February and um, he was 90 years old and we had, um, he had struggled with cancer and all kinds of heart failure and diabetes and had 
a really hard last few years of his life, but in his youth, and as I was growing up, he was a fisherman. Him and my grandma spent many a summer with us out camping and fishing. That was his thing. He loved to fish. He loved fly fishing. He loved getting out there in his waders, and he was a short man, so he couldn't go in too far. Um, <laughs> But most of my childhood memories are of fishing with grandpa or at the, the beach. Um, so when he passed away, we had all of these flies he had tied and he and my grandma produced seven children, tw you know, 10 something grandkids, 23 great grandkids and trying to find something that we could give to each person who loved him. Um, without fighting over it, um, I decided I was gonna make a project and I cut out some shapes on the laser cutter in the shapes of hearts. And I, I had to glue a couple of them together to get the depth that I needed to be able to put the, the flies in. And then I just let them dry, uh, rubber banded them together so that they wouldn't fall apart while they were drying. And then I got, I got my resin sheets from Make You, and I had to get the heat shield so that it would work properly. So I put the resin onto the Make You and popped that up into up where the heat is with the heat shield. I had never used the heat shield before, so that was kind of a learning experience. Mm. Um, I was able to make four heart shapes per sheet for my mold which was nice because um, my project is going to require a lot of them. <laughs> um, so I then pulled the resin sheets down once they got warm enough and waited for my molds to cool. Uh, the resin sheets uh, take a little longer to warm up so you want, and you definitely want to leave them down clamped until they're fully um, cooled, otherwise it warps as it dries or as it cools. So I got the sheet off of the Make You with my little laser cut hearts in it and I popped them out and I was really um, impressed with how nicely the, the sheets stayed in shape once I popped them out. They mm. didn't, didn't uh, skew or anything. So yeah, you can see it that, turned yeah. out to be a really nice mold. And then it was time for the resin, which I had never used before. And so I so got- what, yeah, yeah, what is this resin and where did you get this from? I just got a basic learner's kit kind of thing from Michael's craft store. And it had two different kinds where you have like a really sticky kind. And then you have another bottle with less sticky kind and you mm -hmm. equal parts in the in the cup and then you mix it together so then i just um poured a kind of a half layer into my mold so that the bottom was covered for each shape that i had there and um it got a little messy oh, <laughs> and i didn't much realize better than how, i would have <laughs> i didn't realize how sticky resin was when it's wet if it gets on anything it's staying there uh, good but night. um and then I just put one little fly in each heart shape and kind of tried to pick a variety of colors so that um, for my project, which I will reveal in a moment, mm. um, there will be a, a variety of different kinds that he had made. And I was shocked at how well he did at his age, not being able to see. <laughs> <laughs> really those are, those are beautiful and um how much they actually look like bugs it was really awesome but i um you know i put them in the half layer and then i covered them each with another with a top layer of resin so that i fully encased them because the last thing i want is to hand out little fish hook heart shapes to my <laughs> cousins and have them stab themselves so right. um then i just had to to let it dry for a while and um, I think it, uh, yeah, it just, 
they turned out. I popped them out. I um, found some driftwood. I spent a lot of time as a child on the beach with my grandpa. So I found driftwood and I beaded them up <laughs> and I hung them on a string. I was able to drill a hole in each of the forms with a Dremel tool to be able to, to string some fishing line up through there and then bead some beads on that. And then I just put them on the driftwood and hung them up and I have my, so I made beautiful. one, the one in the video I had, I made for my grandma. I wanted her to have the first one. Um, and then I made my own. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So this is um, mine. That's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to stop the video here so I can see yours full screen. Yeah. So this is oh, mine and very nice. you can kind of see the, Oh yeah. So you use different, uh, Oh, you used two in that one. Nice. Yeah, I was trying to make a heart shape inside of a yeah. heart shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see it. And then um, you can kind of see that. And then I I chose beads that are kind of river rock-like. That's what I was thinking. I was going to ask if yeah. those weren't rocks. Yeah. Yeah. So I used fishing line, which he obviously used for fishing, uh -huh. a piece of driftwood. And then this twine I used um, actually came from his house. Uh, he used to use it in his garden to oh, line wow. his rows so this travels with me in my van and i can hear it clanking around in there when i'm going around corners too fast sorry grandma i don't go around corners too fast i am a good driver right. <laughs> well that is really really special thank you for sharing that with us that's that's really yeah. uh a very sweet project and i just i'm, I'm glad you did share it though because it just it just goes to show how personalize you really can make things i mean you yeah you're not going to find something like that in a store obviously that's something that you could only make yourself so that's right. that's really wonderful you know i just had a thought for for those moms like me who saved every single baby tooth you ever had your kids lose yeah. you can encase them in resin and then you won't lose them in the bottom of your jewelry box that's true that's true make them into a necklace or something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been a lot of fun. Jen, thank you so much for talking to us about these projects. And I'm going to invite our audience to stay tuned to our YouTube channel because there are some great videos out there now, but there's lots more to come. So definitely stay tuned there. Yeah. There's lots of great uh, content there now and, uh, and more coming. Uh, we are actually at the end of season two here now for 3D Universe Untethered, so this, that's very exciting. And we're going to be taking a little bit of a break here as we get all of our uh, uh, next uh, season of episodes together and ready for you. So stay tuned. You can always visit 3duniverseuntethered.com. We will always post the latest news there about the next episodes when we have those lined up, as well as the recordings of all of our current episodes. And for any of the, uh, the Make You Form Box or any of the associated sheets, anything we looked at today, head over to shop3duniverse.com. You can find them there with a lot more information, more videos and things like that. And reach out to us if we can help in any way. If you have more questions, we're, we're here to talk to you and, and help you kind of figure out how to get these things going in your, in your makerspace or classroom or business or whatever it might be. Yeah. So um, again, Jen, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, and if there's anybody who wants me to try something out, um, you know, if there's a, a project that you're thinking of and you don't want to waste your money on trying to make a form with it, my boss pays me to do this stuff. So if you have any projects you want to try or, or anything and you're questioning, um, go ahead and leave us comments in the comment section and I'll see what I can do and make a video of it and then share it. And then I will be your prototyper. I like it. That sounds <laughs> like fun. I hope people will take you up on that. But either way, we will keep those uh, videos coming. We'll keep sharing our projects. So uh, stay tuned. And we look forward to being back with you uh, for season three of 3D Universe Untethered in the near future. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you, Jen. We'll see you Thank all next you. time. All right. Bye-bye.